Hi guys, Mr. Ruff Waffles here. This is going to be a comprehensive guide for you to upgrade your Blundergat into a Magma Gat in Blood of the Dead. The Magma Gat is similar to the Acid Gat or Monkey Bombs even, in that each shot you fire will attract zombies to wherever the shot lands. And it doesn't last quite as long as a regular Monkey Bomb might do, but it lasts a little bit longer than the Acid Gat. So it's a nice in-between. It's great for escaping if you're in a tight corner, which happens an awful lot on this map, I feel like, and obviously just killing hordes as well. Now, in this particular guide, I've tried to account for all the possible worst case scenarios, and so you could get the Blundergat out of the box and get really lucky, but if you can't get it out of the box or you don't want to have to spend all those points just praying that you get the actual Wonder Weapon, there's a guaranteed way to get yourself a free Blundergat, and so I'm going to zoom through all of that first, but if you already know how to do that, or you already have the Blundergat, there'll be a timestamp on the screen which you can click forward to and therefore just go straight into the Magma Gat upgrade. So it's really the best of both worlds. So zooming through how to get the free Blundergat, we start off by filling up the dog heads. There are three heads. One is in the spawn area of the map in the area called New Industries. They're building license plates in there. Go in there, head over to the dog head and you need to feed it six zombies. Very straightforward stuff. The sort of thing that we're used to from Darizendraha and also, obviously, from original Mob of the Dead. Once that dog head is filled, you'll hear an audio cue along these lines, and the dog head will retract back into the wall. You'll then be able to head over to the next dog location, but to get there, you need to first turn on the power. So head over to the power switch on the spawn island and flick that on. Then traverse over the catwalk to the original old Mob of the Dead part of the map. And in there, the dog head is in this very recognizable location. Feed it its souls, it'll go back into the wall. Bob's your uncle done and dusted. Then we're gonna go through to the third dog location. But to get there, we need to turn on power again. It's a separate power switch. And to get to this particular one, we need to go on a little bit of a journey. So. We're gonna head down these stairs outside the warden's office, and if you follow me here, you can also, by the way, double check that you've fully fed all the dogs by looking up at the three dog heads on the wall just here. It's a nice little sort of checklist for you to use, but if you keep going down, go down actually through the spiral staircase as well, head all the way down, and then open up this door here. If you work your way through the building, you'll see multiple power switches, and there'll be one turned off in your game, which you have to turn on. It'll randomize, it'll just be one of these three. Now that you've turned that on, go all the way back the way you came to the warden's office and go inside. There'll be a 2,000 point door, and the dog location, the warden's house, will be located right behind it. Feed the dog head, and as easy as fish and chips, you're finished with this part of the process. You're then going to be able to use the fast travel inside the warden's house to get yourself the Hell's Retriever. Simply activate the fast travel from the warden's house, and when you're passing over the Hell's Retriever floating there, after you've done all the dog heads, hold square, and you'll be able to grab it. All that you need to do now is throw your Hell's Retriever at five blue skulls located around the map. But those skulls can only be seen using the shield that you can build on this map. Now, thankfully, you don't need to actually build the shield in order to retrieve these skulls using the Hell's Retriever. Because I'm showing you where they are in this gameplay, you can ignore the shield entirely, although I do recommend that you build it in your game, and I have a guide for that in the top right-hand corner of the screen right now on my channel. So, simplifying things, you're just going to come to where I come to, you're going to throw the tomahawk in the direction that I throw it, and you're going to get a skull. The first one we're going to do is towards the docks area. You're going to throw your retriever at this wooden beam kind of pillar thing that's near where PhD is and where Mule Kick used to be visible in original Mob of the Dead. That's going to give you one of your skulls. Next, you should head towards the roof of the map and you can get there nice and easily by just going and taking the gondola. Once you get up there, head straight across the catwalk and take a right and then work your way through the little doorway here, take that left and head up to the roof. Once you reach the roof, you're going to want to go straight and then throw your retriever at the left side of this wooden box to obtain your second skull. And by the way, you can do your skulls in any order. Just throwing that out there. Then the third skull is going to be back in the old Mob of the Dead spawn room. So we're going to go via the library. Head back down there, and just outside the door is a cell that contains the third skull. So throw it right there. Boom. Skull obtained. The next skull we're going to do is on the spawn island, so you're going to need to go back across the catwalk for this one. 
it's facing the building that you spawn in and essentially there's a little bit of a kind of ramp up and you're gonna throw your tomahawk across here and i mean you can see in the gameplay that's where i get the skull from for the last skull we're gonna head right back to the warden's office where we were a couple of minutes ago and head outside now near the dog head on the left side you're gonna throw your retriever towards the top of the pole the kind of telephone pole and that will give you your final skull now that you've got all five go back into the office and a free blunder gat is gonna just be on the table for you to grab easy peasy lemon squeezy now we're at the point where we can start the magma gat upgrade process so if you've just followed the previous part of this guide and you've got here good stuff you're about halfway if you've skipped forward into the video hell yeah let's get cracking you need to be at the warden's house to kick this off, which will be just where you picked up the Blundergat if you got the free one off his table. Go to the back area here and place the Blundergat inside the fireplace. I really recommend using Burned Out for this step, by the way, because it might get a little bit hectic. I mean, it will get hectic. So, you're going to notice three skulls above the fireplace, and they're going to light up as you progress through the step. Your job is to kill zombies and they're going to drop essence. As you keep killing zombies, more and more essence will drop. And the essence will only drop when you're inside the house and not when you're outside. Now, similar to the Origins Firestaff Cauldrons step, as you kill more and more zombies, you're gonna notice that the skulls eventually light up. Now, I wanna be clear here, you need to actually walk over the blue souls because that's how you're gonna kinda pick them up and it'll make a sound cue when you do so. And once all three skulls are lit, you must deposit your collected essence. This is done by holding square. Shortly afterwards, the fireplace itself will turn blue and then you can pick up your weapon. Now I know it looks cool, but hold your fire. For this next part, because you're not finished yet, you've got to be fast and efficient. I recommend doing this, ideally, towards the end of a round if possible, because it will just make your life a little bit easier. So. Notice that there are blue flames on the barrel of your gun, and the name has changed to the Tempered Blundergat. Once the flames on the gun run out, you're going to need to restart this step, and if you shoot, it depletes faster. That's why I'm telling you to hold your fire. But if you do mess up, simply put the Blundergat back in the fireplace, and you can restart this step. It's not really that difficult to do this next part, so you shouldn't be too worried. What you're going to want to do is run outside the warden's house and find this barrel that is lit up with blue flames. Look at it for a couple of seconds, just run over to it and look at it, and the fire on your gun will replenish to full. You're essentially recharging that essence energy that you have on your tempered blundergat. Then, don't stop running, just keep on going because you're most likely going to outrun any spawning zombies. This is why I'm saying you've got to be quick. You're outrunning the zombies and you're trying to keep your fire alight. Continue on the path that I am running right here and essentially keep replenishing your flames on each barrel that you come across. There are going to be five in total and eventually you're going to find yourself back in the spawn area of the map. The final barrel is the hardest to reach in time, I mean, that makes sense, but if you never stop sprinting, and especially if you have stamina up, you should be absolutely fine. You'll notice that we're back at the original first dog head that we filled up right at the beginning of this video. You're going to place your tempered blundergat with its flames into this flattener, and you're going to let these ghosts just do their thing. They're going to just have their way with that blundergat real quick. Congratulations. You can now pick up your magma gat. Now then, as I do with all my guides like these, I'm going to show you some gameplay of me actually using this bad boy now, so you can get a feel for whether you want to put the work in in your game to do this, or if you just don't want to bother. The magma gat, in my opinion, is a really nice quality of life upgrade from the acid gat. It just makes things a little bit nicer, and I also kind of prefer the effect on it. I just think that it's pretty cool. I should also note, actually, that you can pack a punch this weapon also before or after doing this upgrade. It doesn't actually matter. Now, here's me doing a little bit of camping using the Magma Gat, and you can see kind of how effective it is in a reasonably kind of medium round, I suppose. It's not crazy low, but it's not obviously like 100 plus or anything like that. I'm very curious to see how this weapon fares for really high round play, because I'm sure that people are going to be trying to go to round 500 on Blood of the Dead eventually, and so we might just see the Magma Gap being a key part of that process. But for now, 
It certainly seems to do a decent job. You've obviously got to keep your wits about you. And in this gameplay here, I'm running mutations just to make recording the guide more easy and make everything more clear. And so you might find that in your game, it feels like it's a little bit less effective, but that's actually just because you've got less health or my damage multiplier is higher or something like that. Such is the nature of Black Ops 4 Zombies in 2018. So, hopefully this really comprehensive guide has been useful for all of you. If it has been, please subscribe and turn on notifications by clicking the bell on my channel. Thank you so much for watching. I'm sure I'll see you very soon in more Zombies videos. Bye for now.